Hello there and welcome. This is Mikhail or Michael speaking and as always at the beginning of the video I want to express my gratitude towards those who decided to support me financially, be it through Patreon, PayPal or Super Thanks. Words cannot describe how grateful I am for that, so thank you friends and have a blessed day. Today's video I will start with the Kharkiv front line, to be more specific, Kupiansk front. In the last 24 hours, Russian forces continued their assaults all across this front, here in the direction of settlement of Sinikivka, then in the direction of Katlerivka, Kislivka, Ivanivka and Stepova Novosilivka. Russians are also assaulting Ukrainian positions here on these open fields attacking from the settlement of Vilshana and Pershatravnya. At the time of recording, there are no territorial changes to report. Once again, some sources claim that the village of Sinikivka is already in Russian hands. However, I believe there is no shame in waiting out and confirming that information. The evacuation in the city of Kupiansk is now in full swing. At first, Ukrainians evacuated the outskirts of Kupiansk, the residential area here. Reports suggest that this area is being defended by mostly recently mobilized forces, with regular Ukrainian army taking defense to the other side of the river in the city of Kupiansk itself. If this report is to be true, then we can assume that Ukrainians are preparing for a long battle and then a siege of this city. Slowly but surely, Russians are creeping towards the city of Kupiansk, and there are no reports of Ukrainian counterattacks in this sector. It would seem that Ukrainians had fully gave Russians initiative on this front and are now in passive defense. Perhaps it is because Ukrainians don't have enough resources or reserves to spare and counterattack. Even some pro-Ukrainian sources started acknowledging the crisis that is about to happen on this front. However, the reaction to this crisis seems to be somewhat slow. Once again, some reports suggest that Russians have already entered and started fighting for these two settlements, Katlerivka and Kislivka. And this map also suggests that, as you can see, Russians are very close to it. So the front line generally was very active in the last 24 hours, with Russians constantly assaulting Ukrainians here. So perhaps we are going to witness Bakhmut 2.0. With all the information I could get on this front, it would seem that Ukrainians will defend it hard and will not retreat from it. Once again, if we zoom out, we can see that the city of Kupiansk is the biggest city on this entire front. And after I draw the roads that go in and out of the city, you will understand the key strategical importance of this city. So as you can see, Ukrainians cannot allow themselves the luxury of losing this city without a hard fight. Because with the loss of this settlement, they will lose, lose possibility to supply their troops in almost one third of the Kharkov Oblast. Then from here, let's move to the city of Bakhmut. First, let's touch the northern flank of it. Ukrainians continued assaulting Russian positions within this ledge right here in attempt to capture Dubovo Vasilivka and establish better control over the tactical heights. And with that, assault Birhivka now from the flank. These Ukrainian attacks were unsuccessful. Ukrainian attacks in the direction of Birhivka and Yagodne were also unsuccessful. From the northern flank, let's move to the southern one, and the situation here had changed. As a result of continuous Ukrainian assaults here in this sector, they were able to launch a successful attack in the direction of Klishevka and once again re-enter the settlement to the southwest of it. Ukrainian assaults in the direction of Andreevka had not seen any success, however, the Ukrainian counter-attacks in attempt to negate yesterday Russian attack was successful and they were able to regain some of the previously lost positions. So, as a result of actions in the last 24 hours, this is how much territory Ukrainians were able to recover. The fact that the territory here in this sector changes hands so often proves the fact that neither Russians or Ukrainians have upper hand here on this front and there is currently a fierce fighting ongoing for the control of the initiative. With Ukrainians being able to advance here near Klishevka, the settlement itself is now in danger once again. And at the time of me recording, there are reports of Russians counter-attacking here in this sector in attempt to stop this Ukrainian advance. Then from here, let's move to the Zaporozhian front line. First, let's toggle the situation around the Vremivka tactical bridgehead or to be more specific, settlement of Urajaina. The settlement of Urajaina 
has been subject of constant Ukrainian attacks for a long time, and about one third of it had already fall to the Ukrainian forces. There is an interesting video that I have for you to show, just know that the POV of it is going to be from the Ukrainian perspective, and it's going to be like this. Here on this video you can see two Ukrainian tanks advancing on the roads within Urajaina settlement and firing upon Russians on the other side of the village. Now the report suggests that there is another Russian tank firing with them as well, so the video is called a tank duel. The result of this fighting is unclear, but in any way I decided to show you this video as it provides very valuable optics of this battle. Now at some point Ukrainian tank stopped at the edge of their controlled territory, right here which you can see on the video to the left bottom of your screen and continue to fire upon the Russians on their side of the village. This in a way proves the control of Ukrainians at least to this line. Judging by the fact that the tank is not advancing further, this could be two things. Whether this was a repelled Russian counterattack or we are witnessing active defense on our screens. What support the idea that this was a attempt by the Ukrainians to repel Russian counterattack is the fact that there were some news that Russians have counterattacked Ukrainian forces in Staromayorsky and Urajaina. Russian counterattack in the direction of Staromayorsky failed, but the result of Russian counterattack within Urajaina village is unclear. Then it is important to note that there were reported Ukrainian assaults in the direction of Novodonetsky. And Priyutne. These attacks came from Livadne, Navadarivka, and Rivnopol. Ukrainians also attack here on this tactical heights in attempt to take control over it, but these attacks at the time of recording did not see any success. Then from here, let's move to the Arikhev sector. Each day, Ukrainians are launching new waves of attack here in this sector in the direction of Verbove and Rabotina. In the last 24 hours, they were able to recover some of the territories when attacking in the direction of Verbova and first line of Russian defense. Recent reports suggest that at some point they were able to enter Rabotina and initiate battle for it, however were quickly counterattacked by the Russians and were forced to retreat. At this point in time, there are no Ukrainian presence within Rabotina and Russians have full control of it. If I'm not mistaken, the territory here in this sector had also changed hands many, many times, which proves that Russians are not in passive defense here and are constantly counterattacking Ukrainians, not allowing them to gain initiative. Perhaps this is the reason why Ukrainians had completely bugged down on this front, taking heavy losses in the process. Then from here let's move to the lapkova piatihatki settlement. Yesterday I reported that this front was quiet, however in the last 24 hours Ukrainians had attempted a small scale assault in the direction of Zheribyanki, but that attack was repelled, Ukrainians suffered minor losses and were forced to retreat. From here let's visit the Kherson Oblast. A lot of news are coming in from the settlement of Kazachi Lagiri. As you can see the map had confirmed that Ukrainians have taken control over the entire island that is located in front of Russian-held Kazachi Lagiri settlement, with this area here being mostly in the grey zone. Here on this video you can see heavy shellings of this exact area. This report suggests that this was Ukrainian forces that are shelling the settlement itself and the grey zone. Ukrainian presence on the recently captured island is pretty high, they are almost fully controlled, except for this small portion here and are occasionally launching assaults across the Konka river in attempt to establish bridgehead on the Kherson mainland. All these Ukrainian assaults are supported by the artillery barrages as you saw on the video. At this point in time Ukrainians are unable to entrench themselves in the mainlands and most of their assaults here had not seen any success. So this is it for today's video, I hope I haven't missed anything. If you found this video interesting and if it was to your liking, please consider supporting it with a like, comment and if you haven't subscribed, a subscription. These actions help promote video to a wider audience and thus spread the message. It also motivates me very much. Thank you in advance. As always, humanity calls me to condemn all violence against human beings. Have a good day and always remember, Russia will be free and great.